for you. Um, I have JIT Real Estate is requesting a waiver from the City of Greensburg ordinances for stormwater management. They're adding on an ex um, to their existing site, which the little part, this section right here is the existing building and what they would add on is approximately 900 square feet right here. Currently, this area is already concrete, so um, it's not really adding any more impervious area, but um, because of our ordinance the way it stays, any additional construction does require some more management. But they're asking for a waiver simply because the area that they want to add on to, like this area right here is already concrete, and they feel all this site is already impervious area that's draining currently into our to Lincoln Street and to the storm service that's around. So I believe someone is present here. Do you want to come forward and state your name whether or not you can? My name is Paul Winterstein. I'm an owner of the JIT Real Estate. Some of my engineers uh, said today they can show up. Do you have a copy of? How many square feet is a current building? Uh, there's a 429 square foot, I believe. The previous building, the total building, is going to be 1508, something like that. Okay, so. With the existing building, same look like what I mean. So it's right. going to be an angled road? Yes. like to speak to this petition. Yeah. Do we have any more questions of the owner? Thank you, sir. So, gentlemen, we have, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. We read what we know. Any thoughts, comments? I go, I go, I'll just, my comment is this, I go back to the same conversation that we had with Sean. I mean, I know it's concrete. I know it's, there's no way there's stuff there, but when you look at 153.15 or stormwater, um, we are going to be changing drainage patterns with the addition of 900 square feet of roof. Um, probably not changing ground contours. Um, going to affect the neighbor right behind him 
without any type of study. We don't know how the we don't, since we don't know the design of the building, don't know the design of the roof, we don't know how they're going to control water runoff to the joint property. So those are my concerns. Answer to your question, Phil. It depends on the, the site. It depends on the contributing areas. Um, I would estimate, and this is kind of a wild guess, but probably five to ten thousand. <coughs> it depends on too how you can detain or yeah detain the flow. The stormwater ordinance is not designed to reduce the amount of water that runs off, but it's to decrease the rate at which it runs off, so it doesn't hit the downstream areas as quickly. Right. Is there a way that the owner of the property could work with you to come up with something you felt comfortable with without doing the study, or no? It's it's thrown a dart at the dartboard without doing the detailed analysis. Otherwise, there's a lot of speculation, and it's not much value. I mean, the only comment I guess on this is it's, it's not being absorbed by the ground now. Or I think in Sean's case, it was different. That's, why, that's the only. The proposal is likely not going to increase the volume or the rate. The question is is this a lost opportunity to improve the closing gas rate? Lost opportunity, to work the lost opportunity, lost opportunity to improve or decrease the flow rate ultimately in Cass Creek. And while this is not a large area, collectively they all started to add up at some point. Good. Any other questions, Rob? Thank you. Any other comments from the audience? I, I think I have another comment. <laughs> I still think we have to look at improving those sites along Lincoln Street. And with it being hard surface, these are two completely different situations because we have a soft surface with green signs in an area where it's going to run right into that detention pond. We, we all know this. I don't see on Lincoln Street on a hard surface area with the drainage we already have there off Lincoln where this is going to increase anything to any extent and this is in a business area right now along Lincoln Street. As long as it doesn't affect the house behind, evidently they don't have any concerns about that. So I I, I make a motion that we grant the, the uh, petition. I have a motion for Tom to grant the petition. I have a second. I second. I have a second from Jamie. Sean, please take the vote. No. Jamie? Yes. Steve? Yes. Kevin? No. Tom? Yes. Mark? Yes. Phil? Yes. Yes, it's Evan. So, Farm McQuaid. Okay. Thank you. All right. Next item on the agenda RH and H investments, a rezone. Towards the interstate, it's the two-story brick house on the 
left hand side. Um, years ago when Honda came in, we took upon this being the main corridor and all this property was rezoned. And if you notice the, the area in orange is the current TIF area. So that's kind of why I outlined that. And I do have a more better copy of the TIF area. So again, the site is right here, and our TIF area is outlined here. So, and this being Honda, most of a Honda. So, um, when rezoning, I think we need to look at, you know, number one, again, this was the main corridor for the B3, and the new corridor for that we were thinking the commercial property was going to be developed, and our comprehensive plan that currently has it B and B3. But if if you decide to rezone it, I think we need to consider buffering, you know, against the current businesses because Hampton Inn is right there. There is ultimately traffic, noise, etc. And Greensburg milling across the street. And that doesn't mean that the properties behind it could not sell for commercial use as well. So it's just something to keep in mind if and when. The other um, concern was there's no city sewer in this area so they had to still be on septic the um, nearest location would be and I'll go back to the other map um, the nearest location is in this area for um, city sewer so they had to see if this was capable of septic or not, and that's their only alternative for that. Rural water does run in front, so they have to connect to rural water. I know some time ago there was um, issues of this being a historic site. The only thing historic on the site is the steps, the current steps. They used to be and belong to the courthouse at one time, and it is up to the owner to decide what to do with those. If, if they do get it to rezone and they want to keep them, that's fine. If it doesn't and someone else wants to do whatever with the property, then it would be up to them to decide what to do with those steps. And I think the potential buyers are here, so I'll let them answer any questions you may have. Hello, my name is Jim Hunter. I'm I'm the one wanting to purchase that home. Um, I understand it's B3 commercial. I'd like just to see and RH and H, you know, gave me permission to speak on their behalf, just to, in favor, just just because they they're they're ready to move on with with this investment. Um, with that being said, you know, as a a lifelong resident of Decatur County, Greensburg. It would be nice to get this home back in Indiana from the owners in Oregon for a simple fact. We want it to restore the home. We want it to live in the home. Now we understand, you know, you got some issues we're going to have to take care of. But I promise you that this house was built in 1868. So this year makes that home 151 years old. So back then when they built a home, this home was built right. The floor joists is hand hewed beams of hickory. Now granted you go back here now and you see a hole in the roof. The trusses is four inches wide by six inches. You know, four inches thick, six inches wide. So it, the house is stout, regardless of what you see on the outside. Now, as far as the steps being historical significance, we can't find nothing on paper, okay? Um, I've been with Russell Wilhoy, uh, Christian Rust, I, I've talked to Gary Robbins. We're trying to find something on paper that says that yes, these steps belong to the courthouse. Now, the state registry for historical homes has this home as notable, which notable in this situation means the rating means that the property did not quite merit the outstanding rating, but still is above average in its importance. Further research may reveal that this property is eligible for the national registry. So, with a little bit of, well, okay, with a lot of spit and shine, this house could be something to look at again. 
So when you see Honda when you come into Greensburg, you don't see a home that's being neglected. You see a home that's worth looking at that makes you want to check into the historical downtown because this home matches what is downtown. And it's still a lot there to work for. Now granted, with the hole in the roof, it's only a matter of time before it takes its toll on it. But me and my wife would love to redo this home and we have the means necessary to do so so we can finish raising our family. So, I mean, we, we have four children, you know, one's in college, one's in junior high, one's in grade school. So, I mean, we, we're we looking to settle back down in Greensburg. Right now, we live on the Ripley, Decatur County line. You know, I have one child that goes to Greensburg. We have one that goes to Jacksonville. We would like to move back to Greensburg, and I would love the opportunity to fix this home to make it what it used to be as a child I remember it being. And that way, when you come into Greensburg, it's not an eyesore. It's something to really marvel at. So I'm just asking the board if they would consider rezoning from an R3 commercial to, you know, maybe an R2 residential. Um, like I said, it's, we're looking at it as our forever home. So, you know, with, with that being said, you know, I, I know one time it was proposed to be a strip mall, you know, which what I would hate is somebody that's into historic history as much as I am is you build your strip mall, then we tear that home down, move the steps or whatever you like to do, then we find out that, hey, this was of historical <coughs> significance, that's lost. We won't get that back. Not with the way this home's built and not with the potential that this home has. So, you know, I just... Just would like to, you know, if you guys really would think about it, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you, sir. If you got any questions, I'll answer what I can. I have one question. Yes, uh, what on the wall, I know you're saying this would be your forever home, but what would your feelings be if both sides of you developed commercially and all of a sudden you got a home right in the middle of the commercial district? To be quite honest with you, we have four kids, and I understand that's not an excuse, but, you know, me and my wife has talked about it, and we know Honda goes in front of it every day. I mean, we still, we're still interested in the home because we, we consider that, especially having a young one, that busy highway, you know, it's just stuff you think about. And honestly, you know, we, we get us some thought and we still feel that we would like that home. You know, even though, you know, it's less than two acres, we're still more adamant to fix that home. And that, the other concern I got is the second one, uh, because of the size of the home, that garage goes with it. Correct. Is, is whether it's adequate room to get a work, good work concession system. Sure. Yeah, I mean, according to what paperwork we, we looked at, we thought it was on city, so we just found out that it wasn't. So, unfortunately, that's something we'll have to dig into. But this deal, as far as with RH and H, us home, owning the home is pending rezoning. Because obviously if it's R3 commercial, being vacant for more than one year, to our understanding, you can't live in it. So we don't want to purchase a home, fix it up, and not be able to live in it. So that's that's why, we, you know, this rezoning is, means a lot. When was it rezoned commercial? Kathy, do you know that? Back in 2007, when all that was annexed to the city. So it's, has, has it been vacant that whole time? Since that was, you know, there about, yes. Okay. Yeah, it's been vacant for 11 years. Any other questions, District? Well, just kind of to the, was it west of that? There's another property there that's like a three car garage with an apartment on top. That's not part of the property. No, no Steve, the only thing, it, it, it's actually, if you look at it, that property is right here. The garage is right here. Now, the parking to this place is right there. It's gravel. The garage is right here. So, actually, that kind of kicks out a little bit to go where the two-car garage goes with that home goes. So, the the uh, like two bedroom apartment with slash storage is something different, which is B3 commercial also. <clears throat> but that has been, to my understanding from the owner's dad, 
you know, it ain't been occupied for a while either. <clears throat> Thanks. Appreciate it. Anybody else in the audience have any uh, comment on this petition? I'm Brian Robbins. I'm the director of the Economic <coughs> Development Corporation. And uh, for me personally, this is a very tough situation because if anybody knows me, knows that I absolutely adore old houses and historic preservation. Um, however, um, you know, judging from uh, it's, it's zoning, it was zoned that way for a reason. It's in the comprehensive plan, which was accepted by the public. Um, I currently am working with a developer who has, who has uh, purchased the lot here to the, I guess the south there, and he has the options on the lot that's adjoining that as well. Uh, and we're currently working with uh, Hampton Inn to develop those. Uh, and uh, and that this would be a, a hindrance to that. Um, that all being said, uh, regardless of whether that, that becomes residence or not, we'll be developing to uh, uh, the, the lot to the south. Uh, and uh, again, it would be a commercial property, so if it is a zone, we need to understand not only um, traffic, but also light at night, uh, depending on the, uh, 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 the uh, construction that's there. I'll say that construction that's being planned will probably be lit 24-7, so you have a constant, a constant daylight there. Um, but uh, uh, yes, it is, it is very difficult for me because I do love old houses, uh, but uh, the city has to grow, and, and we hope to have that be a key. As you come into, uh, I'm, I'm with Jim, I don't like the way it, our, our city's viewed as we come in from that area, from the, from the, off, uh, of the, uh, the interstate there. First things you see is a, is a beat up old house, so something has to be done with that with that location. Um, I see it, it especially with the development of uh, Veterans Way and some of the uh, uh, properties surrounding that. I see it as uh, as what is meant to be uh, regional commercial and be free in that. In that. So uh, we would uh, um, encourage uh, it to stay that way. like every time we get into a condition where we have zoning and then we have something that is uniquely different right in the middle of it, it causes problems. Spot zoning has always been an issue and it has caused issues and anytime we can avoid spot zoning it's a good thing to avoid spot zoning. Um, the other thing I wanted to bring up, um, did everyone have a chance to check your emails today? So you had a chance to read the letter from Hampton Inn and Suites. Um, you, Kathy, you think I should read this into the record or just since all members have opened it and read it? For the record, we have to state that you have received a letter from the okay. Hampton Inn and we'll kind of refer what it's right. about so if it's for or against. So officially for the record, um, the Planning Commission was uh, uh, presented a letter from the Hampton Inn and Suites. Um, by um, Laura Saylor, um, who works for the Hampton Inn Suites. They were, uh, I'm writing and concerned to the property located at 2229 North Michigan. While we understand the house and the property in question is historical value, it has been in disrepair for several years and would serve the community better being developed as a commercial property. The official position of the Hampton Inn and Suites by Hilton is that the city of Greensburg comprehensive plan, which was officially adopted in 2015, which identifies a property in question to be zoned commercial should be deferred to. There are concerns with having a residential property so close to the hotel. Noise is a common complaint. Noise is a common complaint by our neighbors. This includes refrigerated semi trucks parked in our lot that must be left running, practicing sports teams and special events. There's also a considerable amount of traffic in and out of the area, both in the evening and early morning. The area is best and most effectively utilized being kept commercial. Uh, like I said, that is. Is the, the high points from the letter from Hampton and Suites. So, anybody on the board have any other comments or questions? I, I 
I guess I just I get the spot zoning idea, and I, and I but this is a, a complete eyesore as soon as you drive into our community, and I, you know, that's where I just struggle with it. I'd like something to be done with it because it is a complete <coughs> eyesore because you first come into our community, it's one of the first things you see off the interstate coming in, and it just I'd rather we develop and do something with it. And, and we we rezoned it 12 years ago, and nobody's beating down the door to come develop on this property. That's my concern. My comment would be: I, I've been part of that comprehensive planning. We spent a lot of time and effort into setting different areas for different developments, and this is one of the key areas for commercial development on that side of town. Both sides of 4.1 there, and you know, I, I really wish you know, can look at a different way, but we can't, we can't come up with a comprehensive plan and designate areas as commercial development and then spot zone in. That's it will waste a lot of money and a lot of time to, to, for this planning, and I think it's a good plan. And that area is going to start developing. You know, we have already some, some areas there. There's new housing going up. Every day out there in that area on both sides of 421, and we have two businesses starting there on Veterans Way. So I, I, one of the people who can help develop the comprehensive plan. I just don't think we can deviate from it and go to spot uh, zoning at this point. Jim, I know you do a good job with that house, and, but it's just not the right place. And, with it not being already hooked up to city utilities, you know, that's a that's another issue there with it as well. Thank you, Tom. Any other comments from you? I'd just like to agree with what Tom said. I also served on a lot of this for the comprehensive plan and we put a lot of time and effort into this and, and I hate to see us spot zone in that area. And Jim, I, again, I know you do a good job. That's, that's not the issue. It's just not right for that place. No matter what this board will do tonight, I just want to um, say that if you approve this, then it would go to city or city council with favorable conditions to rezone this property because it has to be done by ordinance form, and the city council does that. Or it can go to the city council with an unfavorable motion. No matter what, it'll go move on to city council with favorable or unfavorable, no matter what the situation turns out to be. So, or you can continue it. You can um, recommend with no to city council with no recommendation. So no matter what, it will still move on to city council. So I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. Any other comments? Having heard that, I, I guess I would ask for a motion to forward to City Council with an unfavorable recommendation. I'll make that motion. And the motion made by Roy, do I have a second? Second. Second. Phil. John, please take the vote. <coughs> Roy? Yes. Amy? No. Steve? Yes. That was yes? Kevin? Yes. Tom? Yes. Mark? Yes. Yes. Phil? Yes. 6 1. So I will go to City Council with an unfavorable recommendation. Thank you, gentlemen. Other business, parking ordinance. ago it was suggested because we were having so many um, waivers and variances come before the Board of Zoning Appeals and possibly the Planning Commission in regards to our parking ordinance and in our parking ordinance it states that any new parking areas must be curved and um, for the most part it's commercial areas so in doing so we had looked into some other areas like Columbus um, Columbus, you must have commercial parking, you must be curbed. Um, Shelbyville, not so much. 
Um, we looked at Seymour, not so much. Then we looked into other areas like Martinsville. We kind of tried to um, look into areas with our city population and size. So for the most part, it's a 50-50. So you have, if you want to look at cities like Avon, Fishers, all those, yes, you have to have Kirby. Columbus, yes, you have to have. Shelbyville, it's kind of unclear. It depends what the site is, whether you have to have Kirby or not. Um, along their new corridor, everything has to be curved. In the other parts of town, it seems like nothing has to be curved. So it's kind of iffy there on what they do. But um, Seymour doesn't have really anything in place that requires any new commercial um, facilities to have curbing around their areas. Martinsville is basically kind of the same way. Um, and then you get into other, like I said, towns, um, Connersville, there's nothing in place. So it just depends. It's all up to what we want to do. So if we want to keep what we have in place or, you know, we have been, um, we kind of took a little break because Ron has Lincoln Street that he's trying to get accomplished and out of the way. Um, we've been looking into revamping our ordinances, so you know now's the time to say if we want to, you know, limit the curbing, or you know, depends on where the area is at because of drainage. Um, we can look into that. It's specifically, however, we want to look into it. So, um, if you have any questions or any guidance you want to give, I greatly appreciate. One of the thoughts I have at this point, you know, we've, we've been talking about it. I'd like to have a discussion with City Council on Monday just to bring it up so the other council members know what the, the topic and some of the issues that we see with it and get their feedback. Okay. And I do have some of those ordinances in my office. If you, if you can bring copies of those, I'll be happy that'd to. be great. I'll be happy to. So that's all I have. I just want to give you an up to date on that since we've discussed it before and it's kind of fallen wayside and we haven't really had any needs so I know it's late and everyone wants to get home so I just want to make it brief. Thank you. 